Hi, I'm Anish Chandran. I'm driving a BMW X1. Uh, this is the 20i. That's the petrol model. And uh, I've had this car a little over a month and a half. End of December, close to 25th. Yeah. And it's been driven about 1500 kilometers. Oh, I've been uh, following the X1 right from the day it was launched. I've always been a BMW fan. I bought this car only because of my love of driving. This being the size that sits right in between the the SUV and the sedan segment, it's got the driving dynamic. Doesn't you can you know actually have fun with it. You can actually turn it sharp into corners. You can drive it hard at stretches. Nowadays you'd find all these cars have uh, what do you call the dynamic stability control, the DSC, and even the SUV had this. In four years, I've tried cornering. I tried my best in trying to you know take it around bends and try to have fun with it but not once did that DSC pop in you know trying to stabilize the car not even once in four years I've driven it on uh, a beach a drive-in beach and yeah okay I mean it's a big car you don't expect it to go all over the place but this car when I got it I'd taken it out one morning and I kind of pushed it around corners I drove it a little hard and the DSC kept popping in all the time you know you can make out the stability control trying to uh, keep the car in track in line you know so on an open stretch like this just all the run down back and forth you can have the dsc come on you know? so that shows how capable this car is and how sporty it is you know so that it can really push the dsc is one of those things you know that's the fun factor of the car a dsc is basically your dynamic stability control you have it in almost all the cars these days so it basically if you are driving at fast uh, high speeds and you are cornering hard it does whatever it takes to keep you on track but when you come to the x1 uh, there is so much of power going in the acceleration is so hard that you have the dsc cutting in every time to keep it on track you know? so that's the fun part of it just to show that how capable this car is that you need something to hold it back you know that that's the main point when you're at a stop or when you're at a signal you can actually activate the launch program what it essentially does is sends all the power down to the engine at that very point that very instant when you're launching the car out so you put your foot down on the brake and you flow the accelerator, the launch program comes on, of course you turn off the DSC and everything else and you take your leg off the brake and the car just launches from stop. So, you know, that is interesting again to be done safely. It actually puts a lot of stress on the engine when you do launch this car. So they've given a hundred launch control. So launch is like you flow the pedal completely. Yeah, you flow the pedal completely, you put your feet on the brake, you hold it down there. You turn off uh, dynamic stability control uh, and then you turn off everything else. You turn off all assist. Yes, every, all kinds of assist. And then you'll have the launch control program flashing on the screen that the car is ready to launch with a little flag there. And Can we see that? Uh, this car hasn't broken in just yet because you need to do it after 2000 kilometers. No? So, but I've done it on the test drive car and uh, it was just about finishing its 100 launches. So that was a lot of fun to do that. It shoots out, it absolutely shoots out and you can hear tire squealing, you can, you know, it's crazy, it's just crazy the way it shoots. But on the other hand, this is just not a very sporty and just a mindless sporty car, you know, it's very intelligent, I'd say. Because on one hand, you have this crazy, fun side of it. On the other hand, it's got a very calm and economical side to it, where you can actually drive slow and get a lot of mileage for that. This car has got a driving mode, sports mode and eco pro. So once you put it into sports mode, you have the acceleration setup changes, the steering changes, the, the whole dynamics of this car changes. And you are all the time on the edge, you know, driving really hard. You can actually corner hard and it drops two gears just for an idea. So if you're driving at, say, fifth or sixth gear and you put it into sports mode, it will straight away drop two gears down for you. So that's the kind of power you will have ready, you know, at higher gears, you don't. So now we're in sports mode. I have put the steering and the throttle into sports mode. It will change the way the steering feels. The steering becomes much more sportier to handle and the acceleration becomes very, very sensitive to your input. So those two are in sports. By slotting it into sports, I have also put the transmission into sports. So now the gears will go back and forth much faster. It's a two-step affair. But now my throttle is so responsive. If I just touch it lightly, it will be going all out. So this is me in sports mode. Pulling away, I mean, and using almost 200 bhp of power there, you can see that. So, we are all, all out and gone out. You get that surge, you know, when you, when you actually, you can see that. So, in sports mode, even the steering 
gets much more sportier. You can you can find that you can control the car much better. And this right here, I think, is what separates the X1 from the rest. And on the other end of it, you have something known as Eco Pro. So that basically cuts down the power, makes the acceleration very sluggish, a very soft and a very you know comfortable drive, which will not give you much power at the same time. Add up to almost five kilometers to your reading that you're currently getting in terms of mileage. The throttle normally in your Eco Pro has a very cushy, soft kind of a feel. You know, no matter how much you press it, it won't really take off. But uh, in the comfort, it's a mixed bag. You know, it, it's the first half of the acceleration is quite soft, and then later when you push a little harder, it becomes much more responsive. Now I'll put it back into comfort, and you can see that. I'm going to give acceleration, but it's quite gentle. You see, it's not not behaving. It's not immediate. Kind of. No, it's not immediate. It's, it's also got an assist. It is for attention assist. You know, if you are driving and it understands you're driving from the day you buy it, it starts uh, learning the way you're driving. It starts understanding your driving pattern. And if you tend to go off your typical style or your pattern, it will immediately send a warning, asking you to stop. It it, it pops up a little coffee cup. Asking you to take a tea break, or you know, asking you to just stop and see what's going on. Ever since I started driving this car, I think I become typically what they call a BMW brat. Like you would see these cars typically on the road, you know, overtaking or cutting through and getting ahead, and you would wonder as to why. I think the key word I think is effortless. It's so effortless to drive these cars. Where my uh, father-in-law, who's close to 70, he took a test drive and. He was going into sports mode and pushing it hard, you know, on his first drive, on his first day. So it's that easy to use. It's that simple to drive. The beauty of the steering wheel, when you hold it and you see a bend, you just want to turn into it. That's what you want to do. What do you mean by corner? Uh, I don't really mean 90 degree turns or you know U pin bends. It's your normal turn that you would make on your other cars. You you must have heard the term in BMWs, uh, cornering on rails or turning on rails. I even mean, I've Heard a lot about that. So one fine morning, I took this car out at about six six thirty, and an open stretch of road where there's nobody, something like this, and you had these lines in the center. So I decided to put uh, one end of the car on these lines, and I pushed it at a good speed, and I turned around those lines. Where the car didn't move out of it, it stayed on those lines. It took that turn all the way around on those lines at uh, you know good high speeds. So that. Kind of stability that you're talking about. You never get scared to push it in. I think the car will convince you in itself. All I need to do is put you in the driver's seat, turn that sports mode on for you, and 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 let you just, you know, go out on a drive, go around a few bends, come back, smile, and buy the car. I think that's that's all I can say because that's what happened to me. That that's how it worked for me. Because otherwise, all of these cars are in the same league. You know, they're all beautiful. They're all well built. They're all put together. Some have some features, some don't. But I think the heart is this: you know, the steering, the engine, the transmission. If you really want to have fun, then I think this is the one that you have to be in. If you want to drive it yourself and you love driving, I don't see why I don't see a reason why you shouldn't buy this. Well, if you come and tell me that your driver is going to drive you to work and you're going to sit in the back, or you want something very plush and very comfortable, and you know you don't want to know. Uh, the roads, uh, what's happening, and you just want to reach uh, your destination, you know, in utmost comfort. Then I'd probably tell you this is not the car for you. Only if you're going to drive, and the drive is going to be a little harsh. Not that you know, it's not unbearable that you're going to not buy this car. Then in that case, I tell you not to buy this car at all. The whole concept of this car being something that you would want to drive rather than you know. Be in the back seat. This is definitely not a chauffeur-driven car. If you like this review, uh, please uh, subscribe to this channel and uh, don't forget to press the bell icon and also give it a like. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.